Welcome to the Battle Zone. On a night when both sets of tag team titles are on the line, we're starting off with a non-title match in the Canadian National Division, which isn't even a thing. The following non-title contest is scheduled for one fall in the state first. And here is a quick parade from the Independent Circuit. He is the Union Gathering Wrestling League, Canadian National Champion of the Match Classic 2. Matt Classic 2, our new Canadian national champion, 51 wins, 43 losses in his AWO career, putting him at a ratio of plus 8, and he is answering an unusual challenge from Bullet Club Gold, the Bang Bang Gang as they call themselves, because porn. If Juice Robinson can beat the champion in a non-title match, Jay White will receive a championship opportunity next week. The, the House Classic has long been part of defending the AWL, so and I can see where they're going with this. Being accompanied by the usual cast of recaps, representing Bullet Club Gold. Rock hard to swimming soul. Oh, he's just never going to shut up, is he? The Golden Gang? No, you're not the... Are you the Golden Gang or are you the Bang Bang Gang? Come on, you know, pick a stupid nickname and go with it. You're in America now. Gun imagery means something different over there. Down there from here, I should say. Anyway, Bullet Club Gold is a tag team. They are 0-3 in their AWL record. Meanwhile, Juice Robinson 2-5 and five in the AWL, including those three tag team losses. So he's looking to improve himself in the win column in order to not have the, to deal with the wrath of Jay White, most likely. Matt Classic 2, son of the legend versus Rock Hard Juice Robinson, the man that I used to have so much respect for because he was in a comfort zone that most wrestlers would kill to be in, but he decided to bet on himself. He went to the Nogue Dojo. He started as a young boy. He started as a trainee, became a young lion. He came, you know, went on excursion, came back, became a champion in the International Wrestling Grand Prix. He's he had everything, and he threw it away to shack up with Jay White's version of Bullet Club. When that went south, he just sort of floated over to the United States, you know, spored himself into AEW, and became Rock Hard Juice Robinson. I, I admit, Rock Hard, that's kind of a cool name, but am I the only one who thinks that everybody here in Bullet Club Gold as some kind of a porn star name. I mean, the Golden Guns, Rock Hard. I mean, I'm, I mean, Switchblade. I don't mean to kink shame, but still. Anyway, so as I said, the uh, stakes of this match is the non-title affair, hence the 10-minute time limit. But if Juice Robinson can pick up the win with that left hand of God, although he's been using the right for the power punch lately, trying to train himself to be ambidextrous, great tope over the top rope there. And ooh, Enzigiri by the second generation innovator of professional wrestling, Matt Classic 2. Going for a DDT position on the outside, 20 count on the outside, of course. Any method of victory, pinfall, submission, count out, disqualification, or knockout. Oh, and speaking of knockout, knockout elbow to the back of the head. One, back of the head, impact, more dangerous than any other part of your cranium. And two, it's the shot you don't see coming. That's the one that usually knocks you out. Every boxing coach in the world will tell you that. Standing moonsault on the outside. Not something his father could do. Matt Classic 2, one of few people to have held the AWL, Canadian National, and Intercontinental Championships in the past. In fact, I think he might be the only one. Springboards up to the top rope, flies through the air, elbow drop from the top. He may be the innovator, but he does have a respect for AWL tradition. I like him for that. 
Speaking of AWL tradition, the daughter of our first ever champion, Dragoness, will be teaming with a member of the Tigers dynasty tonight to challenge in the main event for the Joshi Tag Team Championship and the winningest team in the history of AWL Tag Team Action, the new classic six-time champion, will face off against the male augments, both sets of tag team titles, tag team supremacy itself on the line tonight, two count, and Jay White, what kind of hold, what kind of mind control, what kind of cult bullshit, uh-oh, looking for the big punch, looking for that right hand of God, because we can't flip the animation. Boom! May as well call that the Skyward Sword. One, two, kick out. I do apologize to our left-handed viewers that they're not being represented properly here. And this is what I, this is what, another reason I feel bad about, oh, backstep. Oh, the distraction, but a bulldog counter by Matt. Brings him into contention here. And he's going for the airplane spin, his father's invention, but his own innovation on the inside is of a cutter. Uh, why is Juice Robinson, to get back to my earlier point, why is Juice Robinson taking a non-title uh, proving ground match, essentially, for Jay White instead of one, himself, or two, Jay White actually doing his own dirty work? Catalyst my ass. This guy is a cult leader. Over the top rope, Tope Kong Hiro! Not classic too. Every inch, the modern professional wrestler. And I don't think that's a bad thing. We've got we takes all sorts around here. This is the Animated Wrestling League. Like, subscribe, get you, get you, leave a comment. Let me know you're out there. I want to hear this. Tell me what you like about the Animated Wrestling League. Tell me what you like about professional wrestling. Do you know any independent talents that I could find a community creation and bring into the league? I'd love to see that. I wish I could do it spam. Oh, body slam onto the steel superstructure of the ring and rock hard Juice Robinson collapses in a heap on the outside. Five minutes collapsed. Five remain. Matt Classic. Off the top rope, elbow drop from the top, hits it this time, looking for, I think he's looking for the claw, he's looking for the classic claw to finish this off, he's not going to get it, Robinson with the right hand, and there's that left, going, no, oh! what the hell, this guy's pulling bulldog counters out of his trunks, Juice Robinson with a good counter of his own here, and half and half slam, for a full Nelson side slam, not sure what you'd call that. Robinson may be looking for the juice box here, I think. Yet, up, oh, flat out. Into the cover. This could be it, a title shot for Jay frickin' White, but no, not happening. One more time, I think that's what it would take indeed for Juice Robinson to pull off the win here. Matt's gotta come up with something. He's gotta show some intelligent defense and he's gotta show it now. Right hand of God, no, blocked again. Couple of hard shots, and there's the claw, the classic claw, the classic claw, the family maneuver, the submission. He taps out right on the top of his damn head. Juice Robinson is down and out. No flowers for the Bullet Club Gold. Bang, 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 massive misfire at AWL Strong and Free, episode 53. We're doing this over a year now of this. Here is your winner, Matt Classic 2! Great victory for Matt Classic 2 that's going to bring him up in the win-loss rankings. going to bring him up to 9 on his ratio, his win-loss ratio. Big congratulations to him as we continue with AWL Strong and Free. Last week we saw the debut of the Wasteland War Party and now the newest member of the AWL roster, one-on-one -on -one with a recent former AWL Joshi champion and number one contender. The following contest is scheduled for one fall already in the ring, heading up the wasteland, hiding the howitzer, and their opponent, fighting out of Veracruz, Mexico, accompanied by and representing the Ladies of Lucha. 
the Knockout Queen, Luce And that does make it official. We've been suspecting this for a while, but Lupe Peligro has officially joined up with the Ladies of Lucha. They are now a trio in the AWL. And frankly, I think the Ladies of Lucha could use a little bit of a boost that a new member can give a faction or stable. Ten minutes on the clock, one on one. Bang the gong, we are on. Color and elbow tie up. Heidi Howard, sir, I admit, I don't know that much about her. Most of what I know about this woman is some of the fact that she is Max Dean Taylor's tag team partner. Now we know in the AWL at least, her chauffeur. They were the Tokyo Joshi Pro Princess Tag Team Champions. You've seen Maxine and Taylor uh, carrying that belt here in the AWL. Uh, whoa! Dominator! Deadlift Gut Wrench Dominator. Deceptive power from Heidi Howitzer. Anytime you're in a team with Maxi and Taylor, they are going to be the ones known as the powerhouse of the team. They're the tank. You're expected to be the Ferrari. But Heidi Howitzer is showing impressive strength and power in the opening minute of this contest. Right hand by Lupe Peligro, the more experienced wrestler, both here in the AWL and in her native... Uh -oh. <laughs> and in her native Mexico. Heidi Howitzer technically undefeated, 1-0 and oh in the AWL. That was the tag team match last week. Coming back in, right hand misses badly. Heidi Howards are on the ropes here, he rebounds straight into the forearm of Lupe Peligro, who's looking to build her way back up the win-loss rankings and get herself back into title contention. She is the most recent challenger of Amy Wade, the undefeated 22-0 Amy Wade, who is able to turn back the challenge of the knockout queen. Going up, two, frog splash into the cover, one, Two. Referee slightly late on the count there. But able to get the job done. I know he can. He's going to be refereeing two title matches later tonight. And we also have the first match between Usachan and Wild Thing. That's going to be coming up. The first match in the Best of Seven series a little bit later tonight. And a classic claw. A variation of the classic claw, more of a stranglehold. And a great, almost a, like a head scissor counter there, trying to convert into a Juji Gatame, but not able to hold it for too long. Discus Polish Sledge, I think you might call that. Heidi Howards are showing herself to be somewhat unpredictable in her offense, as if her fashion choices hadn't given that away. Now, Heidi Howitzer has wrestled extensively here in Japan, so she should be familiar, oh, sorry, over there in Japan, uh, so she should be familiar with professional wrestling rules, uh, with the 20 count on the outside, over the top, oh, she smashes into the official, senior official Joey Babakadush, the famous Babakadush, the family is down, what tornado pile driver, don't bother making the cover, there's nobody to count it, drop falling headbutt, Referee didn't see that. She'll probably avoid the fine. But the referee gets his wits about him to call correctly, I believe, for the rope break. The leg of Lupe Peligro under the ropes. Got the first match in the best of seven series. We've got two tag team title matches, and we got a high-speed rules match featuring Indy Standout from the United States. Ichiban is going to be here. Uh, actually, I think our very next match facing Tiger Mask 3. I've heard good things about this Ichiban guy. We'll see if he can live up to his name. Spear! The knockout queen. She's knocked people out with that spear before. Two, kick out. With six minutes and change remaining. Going springboard? No, she isn't. She may have been thinking about it. Thinks better when she realized how fast Heidi Howard was getting back to her feet. Another headbutt. And a series of headbutts now. That's illegal in the AWL. There will be fines on the disqualification defense, unfortunately. But Heidi Howard's is fighting with her own paycheck right now. Lupe Peligro going up. Wasteland to the warrior from the wasteland. And uh-oh. 
to face. There was still no sidesteps. Lupe Peligro crashes and burns and... Oh, God, she's fighting her. That, that always squeezes me out when wrestlers bite each other. Disgusting. Following over tie-up kicks in the midsection as we approach the halfway point of the contest. Ignoring the referee's pleads to get back in the ring. Five minutes to the match. Five remains. Oh, and a headbutt to the twisted wrist. So many little bones in the hands and wrists that could do damage to the rest of the ladies of Lucha watching. Thinking this is what the tag team division looks like now. Uh-oh, we saw this before. Pile driver, tombstone. Pile driver. One, two. But no, catches the rope break. Lupe Peligro not able to kick out of that tombstone pile driver, but fortunately able to get to the ropes and force the break, invalidating the pinfall. And that's why that can work even in a no disqualification environment. Because while you can't disqualify someone for maintaining a hold in the ropes, it does invalidate the hold. Four minutes remaining. Heidi Howitzer and Maxine Taylor currently sitting well in the middle of the block here as far as the win-loss records go. Building up, oh! So many tendons and ligaments in the knee that can be busted like that. Lupe Peligro, 20 and 12 in her AWL career, ratio of plus eight compared to Heidi Howitzer's 1-0. Big splash off the top rope, one, two, and three! Heidi Howitzer puts away a former champion and top contender in Lupe Peligro. Oh. This chick is dangerous. Here's your winner, Heidi Howitzer! Congratulations to Heidi Howard for an impressive singles debut in the Animated Wrestling League. You see her in tag team and probably singles competition going forward here in Season 21. Okay, so I've heard some good things about this Ichiban guy, so we've invited him here for a bit of a tryout match. High speed rules, five minutes on the time limit, falls count anywhere, no rope breaks. Here we go, a tie break, a tie needs the loss of both men, immediately a running flash flatliner for the one, two, and Ichiban, if you don't know what Ichiban means, it literally means number one, or the best. So that's a big name to live up to, we'll see if he does it against the third generation Tiger Mask of the Animated Wrestling League. Crucifix, Crucifix Maneuver doesn't hold for a pin, however. I've been told this uh, each one guy is a pretty good high flyer. We'll see what he's got. Simple but effective elbow drop from the top. Connects with the spine of the opponent. Tiger Mask 3, who is currently at 43 wins, 38 losses, ratio plus 5. And I've seen him do this a hundred times. No one ever seems to be able to counter it. Goes around the ring post. Bam! And I love that almost even more than the traditional one in the middle of the ropes because you can grab onto the turnbuckle for a more sturdy hold. One, two, the next generation Tiger Faint kick gets in a deep two count as we're already a minute in to the five minute time limit. I think it was a holy crap chant there from the fans here at the sold out AWL battle zone in the greater Toronto area. And I concur, elbow drop. Tiger Mask, as I said, 43 and 38, ratio of plus 5 in the AWL. He's looking to make sure he is not the Marty Jannetty of the Tiger Brothers tag team. As his tag team partner, the AWL Grand Champion, is jet-setting all around the world, defending the title on all continents. And Snapmare takedown by the Tigers. Ooh, I thought he was going for like a sliding elbow, so I can hit a drop kick. Ichiban, perhaps on instinct, rolls to the outside. Aside from that initial flatliner, he's not really gotten a whole lot of offense here, but he met a bit of luck for Ichiban. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. You can still be Ichiban. You can still be the best. But Ichiban... Ooh, front Russian leg sweep. 
by the Tiger Boat. Nice counter by Ichiban. I don't know. He's going to have to show me something more in these next three minutes. But a nice Juji Gatame rolling from a standing position into a Juji Gatame. Of course, submissions are legal on the outside in high-speed rules matches. Up, Shinji Dai, Sunrise! The dawn of the new era, Shinji Dai, Sunrise from the... Uh-oh, up, down, and Stunner! I think, are they, I think they're chanting, don't come back. Well, a highly efficient win for Tiger Mask 3, his 44th career win in the AWL. Let's take a look at that. The Shinji Dai Sunrise, and then an impressive combination that he ends right there with a stunner. Drop an Ichiban for the 1, 2, 3. If you can think of any other independent talent that deserve a chance in the AWL, let me know. Tiger Mask 3. The stakes could not be higher. True love versus forced labor. The following contest is scheduled for one ball and it is match one in a best of seven series. Introducing first, fighting out of the foreign and making her AWL strong and free debut. Who's the job? Usa-chan's AWL win-loss record from her time in AWL Hontai transfers over. She is 33 and 23, putting her at plus 10 in the win-loss record. She faces off against longtime rival, who frankly doesn't have anywhere near as good of a win-loss record, but she doesn't care about the wins. This is all about love. It's all about bringing her girlfriend, Betty Bubbles, back to the AWL after losing her to Botsumania. And her opponent being accompanied by the Manipulator representing Monster Union. Wild Thing, I think she just wants to fight as she misses kicking on the bunny girl. Wild Thing was in Botsumania last season, and she was one of the final two alongside Betty Bubbles. And it was Wild Thing who pinned Betty Bubbles after the Lycanthra Bomb to eliminate and end Betty Bubbles' in-ring career. Now, one thing I want to make clear, even if Usachan wins, Betty Bubbles will not be back as an active wrestler. She will be back in a managerial capacity. But still, you get your girlfriend back on the road with you. That's a big thing in wrestling. Pro wrestling is hell on relationships. Oh! Misjudge the timing. That's why those kind of in-the-ring springboard maneuvers are so dangerous. You have to turn your back to the opponent. Simple choke slam. A statement move by Wild Thing who drops. I believe that was a knee against her opponent right there in the... Best of seven series. Now, if Usachan loses, and she could very well lose here, don't let the win loss record fool you. If Usachan loses, she will be forced to join the Monster Union, expanding their stable to five. That would be incredibly bad for the Animated Wrestling League as a whole. Neckbreaker by. Usa-chan, both of these women former AWL Joshi Tag Team Champions, and of course those belts will be defend will be defended tonight, and it's actually Usa-chan's former partner before the brand extension, and former co-champion Spring Tiger with her new partner Dragoness, will be looking to go one, sorry, two on two against the Augments, the AWL Joshi Tag Team titles, that's going to be our main event. But up next in the semi-final, the men's tag team titles, the world's tag team titles. On the line, the male augments versus the new classics. 
depending on your metric, the top tag team in AWO history. And that's a move Usachan didn't know last time she faced Wild Thing one on one. Oh, spinning heel kick, duck under by Wild Thing. Now, this is not the first time these two have fought this season, of course. Uh, Usachan with those backstage attacks very early in the season that got her suspended for a month without pay from the AWL for violating the terms of the brand extension. I think it was the fact that she didn't even, she didn't appear on camera and didn't try to wrestle a match. That's probably what saved her career. Or maybe the AWL commissioner just has a soft spot for the crazy things we do for love. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the 10 minute time limit match. Usachan with some control, taking a bit too much time here, I think. But trying to tie her opponent up in the tree of woe. The dog has climbed the tree and can't get out. And Usachan looking to go coast to coast. I've said for years, never underestimate the leg strength of a rabbit-style wrestler. She can do this 20-foot jump. Can you jump 20 feet? I didn't think so. Drop kick right to the head. This is indeed awesome, ladies and gentlemen. I concur. Oh! But the manipulator, that witch that brought Monster Union together in the first place, ooh, with some hard shots. The manipulator playing the distraction. One, two, Ooh, short PDT, not giving, not giving a chance to build up too much wind resistance there. And again, second time the manipulator gets involved. If anything, she's at least extending the match. Overdrive. Usachan fighting, fighting for Betty Bubbles. She's not fighting for herself. Yes, these matches will count in terms of the win-loss records. Yes, winning a best of seven gets you into the conversation for a championship match. Or at least a fight for four. But this isn't even about the wins. This isn't about the titles. This isn't about the money. This is about getting to see your girlfriend again. Long distance relationships suck. Cover for the one, two. And remember, Betty Bubbles, she's Japanese. She lived in Tokyo. You know, it's. You fly 15 hours. To make this match, you agree to move here, to move the family here. In the event of victory, the, this, has been an, this is an official transfer. Betty Bubbles now officially contracted to AWL Strong and Free. Sorry, Usachan now officially contracted. Did I, say, did I say Betty Bubbles back then? No, sorry. Silly me. Going up, going down, going around through the ropes. Going up. Five minutes have elapsed. Boom! Oh, that's going to be a fine. Referee hesitant to make the call here, but he doesn't have a choice. Two. Usachan kicks out at two and a half. He cannot win a best of seven series in the first match, but you can absolutely lose it. You can demoralize your opponent. But the fact the match has already gone half the time limit, that tells us this isn't going to be a swap by anybody's definition. Going up. And powerbomb. Wait a minute. A little bit of a confab, a little bit of a conversation happening between the manipulator and wild thing. A count out victory would count as a win for whoever's still in the ring. In this case, wild thing, but I don't think wild, you know, wild thing cannot be leashed. Not for that long, not for a 17 count. Oh! Oh, just tossing Lucy Chan around like she weighs absolutely nothing. Ugh. Okay, we need to have something to enforce this no headbutting rule. Cover for the one, two. Manipulator watching on from ringside. She's got to have her schemes and plans. 
In play for what happens when Betty Bubbles joins the team going up. Huge blast of a headbutt. Another freaking headbutt. AWL is going to have to have something to say about this. This is disgusting. But here we go. He slots the walls of the Lycanthra Bomb. Can she escape it? She cannot! Lycanthra Bomb! And Wild Thing not going for the cover, or waiting way too long to go for the cover, I think. Playing with her food. There are three minutes remaining. Badusa Chan, empowered by love. Forces her shoulder off of the canvas before that final and fatal three count can be registered. The feral coming out. And here we go, a second, no! Lycanthra Bomb counted into a sunset flip, roll up for the cover one. A great counter to the Lycanthra Bomb. But Usachan needs to figure out a counter. He needs to figure out an escape. So you can figure out a way around the manipulator. Because every time... I don't know why she's so distracting. She's so beguiling. Oh! El sorry. Double sledgehammer from the top rope. And another falling headbutt does not connect. And up, around, down, DDT. Almost a DDT of destiny. Another two minutes remaining. And just like that, we are running out of time here. The, ref the wrestlers can hear those time calls. If you're wondering why those are in the echoey voice, that's because that is sent over the PA system inside the AWL battle zone, so everybody can hear it. We all know how much time we got left. Expect urgency here. Oh, head! Okay, but there's got to be something going on here. How is how is how how is Walton getting away with this? Usachan looking for something as Wild Thing rolls away. She's not the most controlled wrestler in the world, but Wild Thing can use some basic strategy when she needs to. What's this going to be? Springboard, double spring. Ooh, right hand. Again, that legendary leg strength of a rabbit wrestler, the height of those drop kicks. One minute. One and minute left. Standing double salt. Cover. One. Two! Manipulator trying to distract somebody. It doesn't work this time with less than 50 seconds remaining. Usachan can win this. An Usagi DDT could do it. Oh, running dropkick with no wild thing scoops out of the way. And that last roll away may have saved the match for the lethal lycanthrope. The Transylvanian Terror going for the body slam. Going feral, boom! 20 seconds on the clock, Usachan's out. Lycanthra Bomb ends it right now, but no! Spin kick! With the rap, with the strength of the rabbit! Oh no, she doesn't have time for this. The clock's almost out, but she doesn't have time for this. Damn! This match has been ruled. They try to the draw. Get off the ropes! All right, safety now an issue. First of two tag team title matches to conclude our program this evening. So the following contest is scheduled for one fall, one submission, or a knockout to decide the winner. And it is for the Animated Wrestling League World Tag Team Championship. Introducing first the Challengers. Fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, and Minneapolis, Minnesota, by way of Las Vegas, Nevada. They are the six time former World Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, Lee Masters, Sammy Nix, the new. The unstoppable force meets the immovable object tonight. Two undefeated tag teams this season, both 3 and 0, oh, facing off for the big boy belts. <laughs> Thank you. 
すべて帰国博士のためにすべて The Augments. The Augments won the World Tag Team Championship back at AWL Strong and Free, episode 34. And ever since AWL 400, they have been part of Tag Team Supremacy. Dr. Jigoku's belief that his cybernetically enhanced wrestlers are superior to human counterparts. Well, they're about to face the two best human counterparts that the AWL has ever produced. Six time former champions. However, I will point out that. The new classics have not been AWL World Tag Team Champions in quite a while. Their last title reign ending in February of 2019. So it's been about four years. More than, actually, to 21, 2, 3, yeah, more than four years, four and a half years since the new classics have been champions. We now go to ringside for the official announcement for this match. This is an officially sanctioned World Tag Team Championship match under the auspices of the Animated Wrestling League, AWL Commissioner Presider. At the start of the bell, AWL Senior Official Joey Hopkins in charge. Our top official in charge of the new division here in AWL, strong and free. We brought him over from Japan. And frankly, that's the reason he's not lying crumpled in the hospital bed right now, I think. There you see them, the AWO World Tag Team Titles. The oldest active championship in the league. I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be the mixed martial artist Lee Masters versus the Dean of the Active Augments for the Iron Project, Project Tetsu 3.0. Going up and body slam, good old fashioned body slam. Project Tetsu not stupid enough to try and climb the turnbuckle in his opponent's corner. Had a bit of a programming glitch there, I think. Swing and a miss on the leg trip, knee lift by the champion. The augments for the record of the 39th AWL World's Tag Team Champions. The last time the new Classics won the titles, they were the 25th champions. They won the title at the Tag Matsuri in 2018. Made two successful title defenses before losing it to the Tiger Brothers in the United States at National Pro Wrestling Day in 2019. The, what I believe is actually the final National Pro Wrestling Day. That's a, an ancient custom that really has fallen out of favor, I'm sorry to say. Stomp of the ankle by the challenger, now trying to take away the legs of the, cha of the champion. That's how you deal with a bigger opponent. That is smart. Tag is made. Irish whip, we're going simple but effective. Drop, toe, hold, elbow, drop combination. It has always been the new classic's perfect synchronization. Their technical perfection in tag team attacks that has been their Creed has been their great victory in tag team action. Not only are they the most successful tag team of all time in terms of six title reigns, nobody else has gotten close to that. Lee Masters, I will point out, holds the record for most title reigns with, diff with three different partners, a total of nine championship reigns with his brother and with his brother uh, what was his brother's name i forgot now joe yeah joe masters i think 
<laughs> I'm not to be sure. Lima had a brother. And of course, his uh, Young Lions tag team with wildcard Bubba Reese way back in the early days of the AWL, the first time he held the titles. And right now, the new classics are pushing the referee on that disqualification five count. Cover deep into enemy territory, but no, Lee Masters, sorry, Simonix able to get the shoulder up. And it's Jigoku Destroy. A Grand Slam champion in the Animated Wrestling League. Versus the five star champion. So these are four, sorry, two season zero originals versus a couple of season one, season two, longtime veterans. These are the creme de la creme of the Animated Wrestling League, ladies and gentlemen. Both teams undefeated in season 21. Taking a look at some of the win-loss records coming into here, Jigoku Destroy and Project Tetsu are the top wrestlers in this part of the league. 133 wins to 71 losses for Project, sorry, for Jigoku Destroy. Project Tetsu, 93 wins, 56 losses. Ratios of plus 62 and 37. The closest after them at plus 27 is the grand champion, Black Tiger Justice, and he wasn't that close not that long ago. It's been his record infringing title reign that's gotten him there. Lee Masters, on the other hand, 90 and 80 in his AWL career, plus 10. Sammy Nix, 95 and 79, plus 16. Sammy Nix, oof! A well, Shogat's a Taikai champion as well. Jigoku Destroy, I don't believe has ever held, has ever done that. No, yes, he is. Jigoku Destroy is was the 2020 Oshogatsu well, Taikai champion. Sammy Nix won the 2017 tournament. Cover here. Titles are on the line. One, two. This is the fifth title defense of the reign of the Augments, the sixth championship match. The Augments with the dubious distinction of having a 30-minute time limit draw on their record. Five minutes have elapsed. 25 remain. Pick him up, put him down, make it hurt. It's the hat trick suplex, subtype German. And Lee Masters nowhere near, dealing with Project Tetsu on the outside. Lee Masters comes in, fortunately. Sammy Nick was able to get the shoulder up before that. Three count. Kick to the midsection, looking for the butcher bomb. Reversal into a big back body drop, and Sammy Nix is busted open. I think that happened on the outside earlier. Overhand punch, back elbow. Spear, and when somebody that big and with that much metal in their body spears you, you feel every inch of it. Doesn't need a big run up. Diving tag, Ricky to Robert. In comes Rob Masters. That was his brother's name, Rob Masters. Now I remember. What do you want? It was like 23 seasons ago. One, two. Six minutes have elapsed. We know the Augments have the battery light to go the full 30. Now, interesting. The referee removing the chair, leaving it at ringside. Tag Kogeki. Double, big, back, body drop. The Tag Kogeki count now one off. Oh! Fisherman suplex with a lot of extra impact on the on the tail end of that. I'll remind you that a disqualification, since that chair came in out of the ring, a disqualification is a title defense, a successful title defense for the augment. I think Jigoku Destroy, I think, sorry, Dr. Jigoku getting in, getting a little bit desperate here. German suplex from the suplex master, and he's going for the hat trick, no, he's going for the Chimera Plex, Dragon, can he cross the arms, can he cross the big level arms, yes he can, X Plex, the three-headed monster, the Chimera Plex, one, two, broken up. Call it a Chimera, call it a Chimera, call it a Chimera, for all I care. It's one of the most powerful combos in Sammy Nix's arsenal. 
and it was not enough to put down Dr. Jigoku's favorite toy. The only augment that he personally put his name on, Jigoku Destroy. Uh-oh. The Iron Project brought in the hardware, and I think we got a coolant leak, everybody. We got a fluid leak of some kind with the Iron Project. Going for a German as well. And wait a minute, a hat trick suplex to the illegal man, an unusual tactic, as this is just letting Joseph Destroy catch his breath. But obviously not going to hold the bridge when you're going on the illegal guy, trying to make this one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two. And Sammy next now trying to maneuver to go for Destroy into the corner, possibly for perfect synchronization, their tag team finishing move. I haven't seen them use in a while. German, not as... Now, look, look at the difference in the grip here. Not as controlled. A lot more wild. And that's only doing one type of suplex, but you go for destroy. Rolling is... Yeah, wrong position in the ring there for that one. Sammy Nick's immediately back up after that Chimera play. Oh! Did you hear the clang? I heard the clang. Sammy Nick drops right onto that steel chair. He even knew it was there, he didn't see it. So that chair that was introduced to the match earlier by Jigoku Destroy. And at this point, I've lost track of it's legal. I think it's still Sammy Nix and Jigoku Destroy. I could be wrong about that. Jeffries counts up to five, kick to the midsection, Butcher Bomb on the inside of the ring. Tribute to a fallen tag team partner, the Butcher Bomb. Okay, it is Jigoku and Nick. And the referee has lost control of this. We're about to hit the one-third point. Ooh! Yeah, that sound you just heard was the skull of Lee Masters bouncing off that canvas. Excellent throw, excellent suplex by the challenger. One, two... Just barely a two count. You go for destroy, able to get the shoulder up. Sammy Nixon, Lee Masters, as time finally conquered them, can they still rise to the top of the Ten mountain? Minutes of the match. Twenty remain. Chimera Plex, second time. One, two. The bridge broken. Sammy Nix efficiently removing J Project Tetsu from the ring. Jigoku Destroy on his own with the man I've said for years is pound for pound the strongest wrestler in the AWL. Tag Kolgek the opportunity. Yes, what are we going to see? Double big back body drop and throwing the super heavyweight around. And now the mixed martial artist is going to look for the submission, I think. No, a double leg takedown into the mount. Ground and pound. He's grounding and pounding. MMA is incredibly homoerotic, and I like it for that. Tag is made <laughs> off of the ground and pound. Butterfly position. Butterfly suplex. Maybe it was a half suplex. I couldn't half butterfly. I couldn't quite tell from this angle. Roll through. Sammy Nick deciding, no, I'm not going to try to fly in that kind of position. That was dangerous. As is getting whipped across the ring. Remember, that's a 20-foot ring here in the AWL. German right into the bottom rope. That could be extremely dangerous. The titles are on the line, and these four men, well, these two men and two robots, will do everything in their power to either acquire or maintain the tag team titles. Tag team supremacy is on the line tonight, and we still have the Joshi tag team titles to be defended in less than 20 minutes. Huge splash from a man who doesn't fly very often, but one, two, he did it! They did it! Tag Team Supremacy is broken! <laughs> a plethora of suplexes. Tag Kogeki and an uncharacteristic high-flying victory. Here are your winners, and the new anime-looking world tag team champion, the new classics! 
From 25 to 40, your tag team champions, the new Classics! And Dr. Jigoku's night is not over yet because, hey, if it can happen once, it can happen again. We've got two more tag teams, 3 and 0, oh, undefeated this season. And the challengers, you couldn't get a better pedigree in the Joshi division. The following contest is your main event of the evening. It's over one ball, one stop of the and a house inside the winner. And it is for the Andrew Swinging Joshi Tag Team Championship. Introducing the challenger, they have the number one ranking AWL best four, Spring Tiger, Dorothy Bonnet, Dragon, and Tiger! Since the earliest days of the Animated Wrestling League, there has been an alliance between the Golden School of the Tiger style and the Dragonic Dojo. Dragonus's father, the original AWL Dragon, was tag team partners with the original AWL Tiger Mask. An ancient tradition continues in the modern day in the Joshi division, and ever since unifying, this team has been on a roll, 3-0. and oh. Both former Joshi tag team champions, though not with each other. Shigoku <laughs> He's gotta be human. The Augments won their titles at AWL 400 in Tokyo Dome creating Tag Team Supremacy, which is now a thing of the past, and I never have to talk about it again after tonight. Huzzah! Going back to the record, Spring Tiger was part of the ninth Tag Team Champions, and the seventh, the two-time champion. Dragoness was part of the Queens of Wrestling, the first and third AWL Joshi Tag Team Champions. Also winning the title once in the Tokyo Dome at AWL 300. So once again, two of the top tag teams in the division. With the tag team experience advantage going to the robot, and the overall experience advantage going to the biological. Once again, we go now to ringside for the official introductions and authorizations for this Tag Team Championship match. This is an officially premising Joshi Tag Team Championship match under the auspices of the Anime Official League. AWO Commissioner Presiding. At the sound of the bell, AWO Senior Official Joey Popovich in charge. The signature red leather of the Joshi division surrendered to the official and held high for the crowd so everybody knows what the stakes are in this, your main event of the evening. Dragoness starting off against Project Titan. The relative powerhouse of Project Kaiju being kept in reserve. 30 minutes on the clock and a cautious beginning, but a beautiful spin. Did you see the height that she got on that? Into the Dragonus Sleeper. I love she loves that cutter into the Dragonus Sleeper. Not gonna get a submission 40 seconds or 20 seconds into the match. But Dragonus using whatever she's got. Dragon is showing that she can pull those submissions out of nowhere when she needs to. Vertical suplex. No, a front suplex drop by the champion. Champion Project Titan. This is her 18th match in the Animated Wrestling League. She is 10 and 3 for a ratio of plus 7. Dragonets. Miles more experience. 53 wins, 34 losses, ratio of plus 19 as Project Kaiju 
in her 12th match. 9 and 2, also plus 7. And just to point out and get once again the power difference. Both of the both of the augments are powerhouses. The Project Kaiju is the reason she's named after giant monsters. Look at her. Rapid tags by the augments, keeping each other fresh. Trying to confuse and discombobulate Dragoness. I don't think that's going to work, but they have successfully cut the ring in half. As Dragoness finally escapes, makes the tag to her partner, Spring Tiger. Spring Tiger, not as great a uh, win-loss record. She is primarily a manager, but she is classically trained in the Golden School of the Tiger style. 26 wins, 28 losses, cover for only a one does put her on the negative side of the ledger at minus 2, 26, minus 28. Speaking of 28, that's about how many minutes we've got left on the clock here, as momentarily at least it's one-on-one -on -one as Project Kaiju fighting Dragonus on the outside. The augments are desperate here. Wait a minute, we saw Tiger Mask 3 do this earlier. The next generation, Tiger's Feet Kick! Now she is the official manager of the Tiger Brothers. That means she probably trains with them. I wouldn't be surprised by that. Two. A former two-time, both of both of the challengers tonight, former two-time AWL Joshi Tag Team Champions. And we also saw the AWL Strong and Free debut of Spring Tiger's former champion, a former championship partner, Usachan. If this match doesn't go their way, could we see a reunion of Tiger and Bunny a little bit later? Who knows? We'll see how that rest of that Best of Seven series goes. Could we see a trios combination? A dragon, a tiger, and the rabbit? We're a quarter of the way to filling out the Chinese Zodiac. Or the Eastern Zodiac, I should say, since it's used outside of China. Drop down. Oh, look at this. Bit of a show-off on that headlock takeover by Dragon, by, oh, sorry, not by Dragon, but by Spring Tiger. Many people underestimate Spring Tiger because of her size, because of the fact she is primarily a manager. Oh! But she can pull off the pro wrestling. She is just as good at the graps as any of the gals or guys in the Animated Wrestling League. Stunner in between the ropes. Both legal combatants now back in that squared circle. Roll through by the challenger. When it comes to speed and agility, I definitely have to give this particular matchup to Spring Tiger and Dragonus as well. Uh-oh, what's this gonna be? Handspring, oh! I don't know what that was supposed to be, but the handspring countered by the drop kick that need to prove herself on Spring Tiger's part can occasionally turn into showing off. And you saw what happened there. Tag Cole get the opportunity. Oh no. Stereophonic Spears! Double shoulder tackle, if you want to call it that. Project Kaiju in legally now, and I think having two giant metal monsters just crash into you. I think it's going to be a fairly short match. Dragon needs to come in, break this up. She does so. But barely does any damage to Project Kaiju. Five minutes have elapsed. 25 remain. Stunner on the far corner. I'm just gonna sit back and watch this. This is incredible content. Ooh. Can she get Manzagiri there? No, she cannot. Got caught a little too high up the leg. We've had our first time call. I don't think it'll be the last. Spring Tiger showing she's not going down, but she needs to make a tag to Dragoness. Dragoness calling for it. The tag is made. Dragoness 
and Kaiju. Kurakan Rana, a signature of her family's wrestling style. Knee lift right to the face, the original all-rounder training his daughter. Pretty much as soon as she could walk, if not earlier, in the grappling arts. There's only so much you can do to prepare for the Kaiju Crash, or in this case, to avoid it. That's how you prepare for the Kaiju Crash, you avoid it. Dragonus Drop. Dragonus Drop, number two. The family tradition of innovation continues, but that's the illegal warrior. The illegal augment tried for a cover. The referee wisely didn't call squat on that. Correctly, good call by the referee. And Spring Tiger getting thrown about. Oh, you heard that. Please tell me you heard that. The crashing of metal into flesh. Project Kaiju, Joshi Tag Team Champion. I will point out a victory tonight means that the Augments will have the record for most Tag Team title defenses in a single reign. The Joshi Tag Team Division has always been highly competitive. In fact, they would beat Dragoness. Wait a minute, Dragon Drop number two, one of her father's finishers. One kick out. Dragon drop number two. Giving Dragonus a chance to go up. Are we going to see the Dragon Star? I think we are. No, not from that far away. But Dragonus is thinking about something. She's thinking better of it. He was our first AWL Joshi Tag Team Champion. Dragonus and Akira Merune who set the record at four title defenses. Nobody has ever beaten that. So it has been equal by the Augments and the Bird and the Bee, and they took a full season to do it. Overhand smash, going for Dragonus drop number two. Rolls into the cover, oof. It's an unorthodox cover that doesn't put a whole lot of weight on the shoulders. Dragonus might want to rethink that or start scheming up. Dragonus drop number three. Collar and elbow. Going for a tag call. Geki in the corner. I don't think these two have an official tag team finishing maneuver, but we will see. Going up. Oh, up under the white rope, the middle rope, the middle strand. Oh! Backbreaker elbow drop combination. Not sure if they have a name for that, but now Spring Tiger looking for the Kaiju Crash. Again, showing off and walks right into that DDT. Oh, looking a little bit like Tiger the Dark there. With that face grab technique of his. She learns from her charges. She always has diving tags. Oh, beautiful sweep. Beautiful sweep of the leg. Like I said, sometimes Spring Tiger gets a little distracted with showing off, but she is one hell of a professional wrestler. When she hits, she hits hard. Claw slam by Project Titan. And he decides better whatever she was doing. That's a quick minutes cover. Minutes. 20 remain. A one count with some authority there, but oh no, we've seen this before. The Titana Bomb into the coverage. He's too close to the ropes. I don't think so. One, two. Dragonus has to save the match for the biological organisms. The carbon based life forms are in charge here, at least for the moment. The next 19 minutes and 30 seconds could well decide it. Already Tag Team Supremacy has been broken. The new classics are your AWL World Tag Team titles. Wait a minute, Hisato Oza, Spring Tiger Gini, the inverted GTS, STG, Spring Tiger Gini, one, damn it. I hate it, but it is the correct call. 
senior official Joey Babaganoush of the famous Babaganoush wrestling family with the call. He has it right there. Tag Kogeki opportunity, but denied. Swing and a miss on the drop kick. Going for the vertical. Oh, the, that front suplex drop. But you notice Project Titan trying to shake off some cobwebs there. The tag is made. Kaishu here to finish this off, I think. And I think this is the best matchup for the Augment. Spring Tiger versus Project Kaiju. Just the power differential, the size differential might be too much. You see that schoolboy slam into the cover. One broken up by Dragoness. That's why we have extended time limits in tag team matches. Why we have extended time limits in championship matches because these wrestlers need more time to get their job done. Same reason we have a 20 count on the outside instead of a 10. We want to give the wrestlers all the opportunity in the world to finish their business. But hey, unlike some promotions, at least we're consistent with our counts. Did I just throw a little bit of shade at, at AEW and NJPW? Yes, yes I did. Kaiju Crash powered up. Going to be digging deep into the battery life at this point. Kaiju Crash, and this time it hits, and it hits solid. Unless Dragon is to make the break, this, yes, she can. We very nearly had record setting tag team champions. Something I'm sure Dr. Zagoku would at least talk himself into thinking was a Pyrrhic victory tonight. And I think the Augments are starting to get a little bit desperate. They're going for covers after every even vaguely significant maneuver here. A little bit late on that disqualification count. I think he reset the count for some reason. Tag made, dragging us in now. This is not what Project Kaiju wants. I don't know, I don't know what she hit her with. Was that a knee? Was that a kick? But they're on the outside, and oh! The dragon taken down by a dragonic head scissors. Shades of Ricky the Dragon steamboat there. Oh, and elbow into a DDT. Dragonus knows the rules. She knows she cannot win the title on the outside. She has to keep the augments inside that 20 by 20 foot ring. Tag made. Not entirely sure Project Kaiju saw it, but she'll figure it out momentarily. Oh, yeah, what is this? Going, oh! She's down. Spring Tiger is down. She might be out. Trophy will have to check to see if they knockout is called for here. I think it might be as Project Titan comes in to finish them off. I think the Titana Bomb we're going to see. No! Simple choke toss. And there's that pattern again. Hit one in high impact maneuver. Go for the cover. I can only read that as desperation. The Spring Tiger wisely moves away from the attacking corner. Referee turning his attention now. Spring Tiger with an opportunity to get her bearings back. Hits that wonderful leg sweep of hers. And we're about halfway through the time limit for this contest. Fifteen minutes have elapsed. Fifteen remains. Snapmare takedown. Off of the ropes. What's she thinking? She's thinking. Oh, penalty kick. Very Shibata-esque of her. 14.45 remaining, vertical suplex up, drop! And that's actually smart, that front suplex drop. You don't get the full rotation that you do on a traditional vertical suplex, but you remain standing while your opponent does it. That's a massive advantage of the front suplex over the vertical or the German or anything else. Oh, big splash right to the spine, right to the back! Spring Tiger rolls over, is able to kick away. But at some point you have to realize you're kicking at a steel girder. Irish whip into a neutral corner, Canadian flag in the neutral corner. 
Uh oh, full power like a locomotive right to the face. And you're not Superman, you are not more powerful than a locomotive. But you are as powerful as a tiger, as powerful as any tiger. Look, go jumps over the sweep. Maybe go into that well one too many times in this fight. Roll away, get some distance. Oh! I think her head nearly came off. Good grief, good grief and good gravy. As my mother would have said, Jesus, Marty and Joseph. Well, no, it's I had a shit. Oh! Headshot. Possible knockout. Referee being a little bit loose with the whistle on this one with the Yoshi Tag Team titles on the line. The last of Dr. Jigoku's dignity on the line. Uh-oh, what's this gonna be? Lariato! Uh-oh. No. Taking to the skies like Mothra, Tope Suicida, Project Kaiju. This is indeed awesome, but Spring Tiger's lucky to be breathing right now. Dragonus on the other side with the inverted eating inverted choke slam as Dr. Jigoku just stands surveying the carnage. Now remember, he dare not get physically involved. Also, because I'm pretty sure both these girls could kick his ass. Sling Blade. There you go, hit. Elbow strike right to the midsection. Spring Tiger is so... Again, I don't know what they just sort of crash in midair. And now uh, stomping away, almost looking like a, a Dragon School move there. A Dragon Kojo move. Going up. Boom! The 450 elbow. The tiger pounces on her prey. Spring Tiger with all the options here. What's she thinking? She's thinking Tiger Suplex, but no. Twisted, turned, and denied by Project Kaiju looking to defend the AW Joshi Tag Team titles. A tag Kogeki here would do it. I just have this feeling we're in the end game. The tag is made. 11 minutes are on the clock. Oh, and once again, the Stereophonic Spears. Along with the big Busta. Collar and elbow tie up into mid -sec Oh god. I don't know what any of these wrestlers are planning right now. I don't think they do either. I think all tactics have gone out the window. This laid into the match. Tornado DDT! Spring Tiger, I'm not even going to try and predict anymore. Spring Tiger thinking, thinking dive, Tope Suicida, she gets some of it. Bit of a miscommunication between the biological organisms. The tag is made. Sling blade! Two thirds of the way through the tag. Spring Tiger has got to get a moment's rest here. Up! Kura Kanrana! 20 minutes have elapsed. 10 minutes. Dragon Kanrana, her father's signature. One, two, three, and that did it! The Augments have been completely dismantled at AWL 53. Sorry, AWL Strong and 353. Boom! Double strike there. And look at the celebration, they are exhausted. Here are your winners. I am the new animated referee, Joshi Tag Team Champion, Dragon and the Tiger. There is justice in the world, justice once. Konedan, Kimarida.